morning. Morning. Let us pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, giving you glory, honor, and praise for being our Father. Thank you for all things being as well as they are, Lord. We thank you for this moment in time. Right now, I pray that you open up the ears and the hearts of your people to hear what thus saith the Lord. I will try to speak plainly and clearly that my message is thoroughly received. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for this college. We love you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, people, we're all students. We all love the word of God and we're here for a purpose. So, do you know what your gifts are. Hmm. Do like. you know what your gifts are? You have a gift, and you got a gift, and you got a mm -hmm. gift. God has given all of us a gift. Amen. He has bestowed gifts on us that no man can take away. Each and every gift that he's given us is to be used mm. for his glory. Amen. Our gifts are not for ourselves. Mm. It is for him Amen. and it's to be used that he may be glorified. Amen. So God created us for a purpose. Amen. We're here for a reason. Amen. And we got things to do. Mm. He has enabled each of us to reach people that no one else can. That's why the gift is not for us. Everybody is not received by everybody. I know y'all have your sermons. Mm -hmm. yeah. What people have said, some of you are sitting there like, really, what are they talking about? What are they trying to convey? Because that person just could not minister to us. Mm -hmm. But our gift is definitely designed that we may reach somebody that reach. somebody else can't. That's good. Amen. That's good. Okay? So we just look at, think about Romans 12 and 6. In the Amplified Bible it says, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them accordingly. Mm. We are to use the gifts that God has given us accordingly. That's what scripture says. So with that, are you thinking to yourself, man, I ain't even important enough for God to give me a gift. Mm. What, what am I gifted to do? What kind of skill? What kind of talent? What do I have that God can use? Well, you know, the Bible tells us that God created us in his image Amen. with Amen. a specific purpose to contribute to his kingdom while we're here on earth. Yes. That's why he gave us the mm. gifts. Mm. We are created uniquely with our own supply of mm. talents and abilities. We have been given these gifts to bring glory to God and to share the gospel message. Amen. That's Amen. why God gave us these gifts. Mm. So we all have one verse of scripture today. We are going to Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16. One verse of scripture. And this is coming from the New King James Version. A man's gift will make room for him and brings him before great men. Mm, all right. One more time. A man's gift will make room for him and brings him before great men. So repeat this topic after me. The world is waiting. The world, the world is, is waiting. waiting. The world is waiting. The world is waiting. So what does it mean your gift will make room for you? That means whatever God has gifted you to do, he will equip you to do. Mm. Look at Philippians 1 and 6. Paul said, being confident of this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will carry it into completion unto the day of Jesus Christ. Mm. That's yes. what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry, in Philippians 1 and 6. Mm -hmm. He who has begun a good work in you will carry it unto completion till the day of Jesus Christ. So I was, when I was studying this and looking at different passages on this, I ran across this statement by Rick Warren. Rick Warren said, Pastor Rick Warren, he said, what God starts, he finishes. Mm. Where God guides, he provides. And where God leads, he meets our needs. So that was Amen. from Pastor Rick, Rick Warren. And it made sense to me because our gifts will make room for us. Amen. The world is waiting for what we, what God specifically gave us that we may advance his kingdom. Mm. So let's take a, a quick look at how we identify our gifts. So well, keep in mind, this, this is what I want to clarify. I'm not talking about the spiritual gifts. I'm not talking about the gifts over in Ephesians 4 where Paul said, I've given you apostles, prophets, teachers, apostles. Um, he said, Paul said, I've given you, I'm sorry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. 
That's the five-fold ministry gift, right? He, I'm not talking about those gifts. Then, yeah. if you go a little bit further, over in Romans and Corinthians, he mm -hmm. talked about the spiritual gifts, yes. right? Yes. I'm not talking about those gifts. All right. <laughs> okay? So we know those if you have spiritual gift tests where people tell you, you know, you're good in this or your number add up to be this. I'm talking about those specific gifts that God has given you, mm -hmm. it's you, mm -hmm. to advance the kingdom. Some he want to use that he favors you with. So when I mention that, I'm talking about gifts that we don't even recognize as spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. And part of that problem is because we put ministry in a box. Amen. We think everything Amen. related to the church. Amen. But all our gifts are not related to the church. Amen. Some of our gifts are used to glorify him, but it's more mm -hmm. out in the world. Yes. That's why I say the world waiting. Because there are some people won't even step foot in church. So Amen. for the people that don't go to church, how do we get there? How do we reach them with the gift of God? How do we share the gospel? Right. Amen. Am I right or wrong? Amen. The world is Preach. waiting for that gift. It's waiting Preach. for it. Amen. So let's let's ask ourselves a few questions so we can get this down. Wait, wait a minute. Let me let me read the scripture right quick, and this might put in perspective what I'm trying to say. Jesus said, "Whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all." Mm. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, mm. but to serve. serve. So Amen. we got a servant's heart. That's when right. we do what God has called us to do, we're going to spread that gospel with our gift, through our gift, whatever the gift may be. And here's the thing about gifts. This is what I love about all of y'all in here. Over the years, I just met Dan, so I don't know much about you. <laughs> but over the years, I've gotten to know everybody else. And when you talk about your weekend, Dr. Joe, I always start class out with, what did you do? How was your weekend? What did you do? Mm -hmm. He always mentions how he helped somebody, mm -hmm. including the day. What he told us the day. He helped somebody pour cement. Mm -hmm. Right? He'll tell us about when he helped somebody fix a car. Mm -hmm. He'll tell us about, you know, he says, I, I worked at the house over there this weekend. That right there helped somebody. To sh he showed somebody in all their work the love of Christ. He mm -hmm. did. Because he did it out of love. He's a carpenter by trade. He knows that yes. that's a gift he has. Mm -hmm. yes. So he can go out and utilize that to do things that don't even relate necessarily to the ministry. Mm -hmm. But he's witnessing to God and he's sharing the gospel through his love for his gift. Mm -hmm. So your gift will make room for you. And the world is waiting for mm -hmm. your gift. So let's find that little gift that you got that you don't know you have. <laughs> Ask yourself these questions. What do I enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing? Mm, all right. What makes you feel accomplished? Mm. What activities do I gravitate to in my free time? Mm. What character traits am I complimented on most often? Mm, all right. What do people say they admire about me? Mm. About you? What do people say they admire about you? What ministries or volunteer opportunities pique your interest? that you may feel good about doing? Those are some of the questions that you can ask yourself mm -hmm. that helps you figure out what that gift is that's not related to the spiritual gifts or the ministry related to the church. I'm talking about that outside gift, that gift that God gives you just to reach people. Yes. I heard a story one time about this <coughs> blind person was sitting in the airport and somebody was rushing for a plane and something happened. They saw the blind person and they stopped and they minister to that blind person for that moment. And somebody mentioned to that person, you may be the only Jesus that that person see. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. because they're blind, mm -hmm. they don't know, and nobody obviously may not be taking them to church or whatever the case may be, but that moment, you spent that moment with that person, sharing the gift of God, the mm -hmm. gift he's given mm -hmm. you, and then you were able to minister or reach that person. That's a gift. Everybody don't have that. I think the lady that led Billy Graham, I read this, the lady that read, led Billy Graham to church, she only ministered to one person. Hmm. And look how many millions Billy Graham mentioned. He, 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 he ministered to. So it only takes your gift can reach one person and still spread across a multitude of people. All right. mm -hmm. So let's look at Miss Joanne. I asked her about her backdrop. All right. How did you get to a point where you want to work with these girls? She said, Back when she was in another ministry, but God kept harping on her with that scripture with the fruit of the spirit. She said, she said to God, I already know that scripture. Why you keep why you keep reminding me of the scripture? <laughs> Little did she know the fruit of the spirit princesses would be born. Mm, right. She didn't know that. She just told me that. She said, I didn't know that what he wanted me to do. But through that gift of working with children, her love for children 
God blessed her to do this. And then I think about myself. When I was uh, at uh, Faith Baptist Church, and I was, we did a ministry at Crestview Nursing Home every fourth Sunday. So our job was to go to the rooms, knock on the doors, and ask the residents did they want to go to church, did they want to go to chapel. So I got out of youth group, because I was over the youth group, and we would go to all the rooms, hey, Miss such and such, and Mr. such and such, you want to come to chapel today? They was like, yeah, some say yes, yeah, some say no. But for ones in a wheelchair, we would push them, the ones we would help walk and escort them, mm -hmm. and then just kind of bring that joy, because these people in the nursing home, some don't have visitors. You know, Amen. we're real what they got. Amen. So one, every Christmas, we would do a fruit basket for them. And so one Christmas, I said, okay, God, what can I do differently? What can we do differently? I had all the kids to make a Christmas card, homemade Christmas card. Amen. I brought crafts and arts and all of this, and I wanted them to do something different, unique. Not put a name on it, just welcome them and let them know that you love them. So they made these Christmas cards, so we stuck them in the fruit basket. So as we, when chapel was over, we was taking them back to their rooms, we gave them their fruit basket. And so for the ones that couldn't read, we asked them, did they want us to read the card? So we read the card, and all the kids read their cards, and the, the, the people were so happy. Y'all yes. have never seen smiles like that. Mm -hmm. So Amen. that was nothing that was planned. That was just something to, that God gave me to help mm -hmm. with those people in that nursing home. Don't you know that next fourth Sunday, the chapel was full? Mm -hmm. All right. The kids was running and they was like, I want to go too. And then they'll have to run back into the residence and get them. It was four floors in that, in, in that facility. Mm -hmm. So the kids would have to go up to the next floor and get away. And we were tired because the word got out. Yes. And that's what your gift does. People yes. start to notice it. Yes. You know, you know what I mean? Dr. Amen. Joe tell us about all his speaking engagements. Who do you think invite him? Why do you think people invite him? He, they've noticed that gift. He's perfected that gift. He's, yes. He excels at that gift. And God did what? He opened up a door. Amen. Okay, so how does he open doors? Teach. Right? How does God Teach. open up doors? Let's look at a few scriptures about that. Let's go to Colossians 4, 2-4. through 4. It says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God will open to us a door for mm. the word. Yes. Amen. Okay? Prayer opens doors. Mm. Yes, it does. Don't it? <laughs> yes, it does. So let's look at Acts 25, 26, uh, chapter 16, 25 through 26. But at midnight, Paul and Sil Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open. Mm -hmm. Powerful prayer opened up those doors. Amen. Right? Amen. That power, I mean, they, they, it caused an earthquake they were praying so hard. And then let's look at Acts 14 and 27. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he opened the door of faith to the Gentile. Amen. Your faith opens doors. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, to talk. In Isaiah 22 and 22, the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open and no one shall shut. Mm, and he right. shall shut and no one shall open. Compare that to Revelations 3 and 8. Mm. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Whatever God opens, no man, no man can close. Can Whatever God closes, no man can open. These That's are the right. doors that God opened on behalf Amen. of his people Amen. to let their gifts manifest. Amen. The world waiting for Amen. those gifts. That's right. So one more. When I came to the city of Troas, this is 2 Corinthians 2 and 12. When I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord opened the door mm. of opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Talk. Mm. A, day, a door of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So Amen. your prayer, mm -hmm. your faith, your um, your prayer, your faith opens doors that God opens for you and then he creates these opportunities. And in Matthew 7 and 8 he says, Ask, receive, he that seeks, find, and him that knock, it shall be open. Mm -hmm. God opens doors based on your persistence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Don't he? Yes. Yes, he does. Then that then that neighbor persists, keep knocking and say, I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you. So God opens for that. So now, part two. How does your gift bring you before good men? Mm. It's the second part of the scripture. Part Teach. B. How does your gift your gift bring you before get great men? 
The more you use your gift, the bigger it gets. Mm -hmm. The more it gets noticed, right? Amen. And then when you prove yourself trustworthy, that's when God mm -hmm. starts opening those doors. Mm -hmm. Ooh, glory. He starts opening those doors for you. And then when you, here's the thing, when you walk through, know that you're always not going to be successful. The mm -hmm. thing about opening doors, think about this, when you leave your house, you don't automatically reach your destination, right? right. You got a stop sign, you got to mm -hmm. turn, you know, you got to yield, mm -hmm. <laughs> got to make some curves, yes. and then you're going to get there. So he's going to ultimately bring you to your destination, but I'm just letting you know it may not be without bumps and, bru bumps and bruises. All right. It may Amen. fail a couple of times, but God will give you a first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth is chance to get it right. Mm -hmm. That's just the God that we serve. So Amen. let's look at who in the Bible that we can think about God gave an extra no ordinary gift. First person popped in my head, Joseph. Mm -hmm. First person popped in my head was Joseph. Joseph had this extraordinary gift to interpret dreams. Yes, he did. To interpret dreams, yes, right? Yes, he did. His brothers messed him up. Hmm. Potiphar's wife messed him well, up, yeah. and then he ended up in prison out of all places. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When you start working the gift, you start excelling in the gift. Love it. You start rehearsing the gift. Yes. It's going to make room for you. Yes. So what did happen to Joseph in the prison? He interpreted the dream mm -hmm. of the chief cupbearer and the baker. Right? Mm -hmm. He interpreted their, 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 their dreams. One of them will be restored and the other one will be killed, right? Mm -hmm. I'm giving y'all a little quick version, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And so then when, jo when the cupbearer remembered Joseph, he came before Pharaoh. Your gift will make room for you and bring yes, you will. before great yeah. men. Mm -hmm. All right. Pharaoh was king. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh was king. Mm -hmm. Joseph was in the prison. That gift of interpreting dreams brought him all the way to the palace. Mm. Yes. And now he's second in command mm. behind the king of Egypt mm. because of his yes. gift. Yes, Lord. Your mm. gift mm. will make room for you. Talk about the world is waiting for your gift. Mm. So, what do we do with our gifts? What do we do with our gifts? How do you know what God wants you to do? I, I'm reminded of the national championship. I love sports. I'm a sports fanatic. Really, put the capital F A N A fanatic. <laughs> uh, so at the national championship, um, Jalen Hurts, who was the quarterback at the time, you know, I love Alabama and Georgia. Georgia, my favorite. Mm -hmm. Alabama, my next favorite. Right. But I think Nick Saban is a genius. Uh, I really yes, do. I think Nick is a genius. So what did Nick do? Jalen wasn't getting the job done. So, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. Second half, he brought in Tua Tugavaloa, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh -huh. He from Hawaii. So, here's the thing about Tua that stood out. At the end, I'll, go, I'll get back to what happened in the, in the game in a minute, but at the end, when he was being interviewed, if you ever look at the clips, he gave God glory mm. every time somebody interviewed him. That's right. First thing came out of his mouth. To God be the glory. Amen. I love my God. My God, is, Lord is my Lord and Savior. Without the gift he instilled in me, I couldn't have made this happen. Mm. So if you know what happened in the national championship, when he got in, he threw a touchdown pass that won the game. Mm. So mm. God, so who was in? The, who was watching that game? Owners, <laughs> billionaire owners of the yeah, sports team. Right. Who was watching that game? Mm. Scouts from everywhere. Mm -hmm. So he brought him before great men, mm -hmm. and he saw fit to give God the glory. That's Amen. what I'm saying to you. Your gift will make room mm -hmm. for you, and the world is waiting. I can't wait to see what happens to him in the NFL. Mm -hmm. They already scouting him from now as a freshman, an 18-year-old, because the gift God gave him, he made room, and he exploded in front of all these great men. Mm. Okay, mm. remember the word My great in, in the world terms. I'm not putting anybody above, but I'm just saying great in terms of their wealth, their, their status in the world. You mm -hmm. bring you before great men. Mm -hmm. So now, regarding your gifts, although you're gifted now, each opportunity may not be for you. Amen. So pray about it. Amen. Make sure you seek God on whatever somebody has called you to do. Every once in a while, you might fail. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you know what? God will give you another chance. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. His patience is eternal. Mm. Yes. He will never give up on you. Mm. Thank you, he Lord. He loves you, and Thank his love is faithful. Yes, Lord. So remember, your gift is not for you. Mm. It's for the glory of God. Yes, it's unique that he's only given to you 
So you can go out into this world and share the message of God, mm. the gospel as you know it. So look, this is what I got. This is just a little reminder for you guys. <laughs> yeah. You put this on your keychain, right? You know the word is a replica of the globe. Mm. All right. It's for everybody. This is going to be a constant reminder that the world is waiting for your gift. Mm. Amen. So each and every time you open up a door with a key that you're going to put this on, you will be reminded that the world is waiting for your gift. Mm. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah.